Hello and welcome to the Creating Flyers tutorial from PFTV and in this tutorial we're gonna walk you through how to make a very nice engaging eye-catching flyer. So let's get right into the agenda. I'm going to be introducing myself so you can learn a little bit more about me as well as the objectives of what you're going to learn from this tutorial. We're also going to do a platform demonstration which is where we go through the platform you can use to actually create the flyer. And then we're going to have an example of me creating a flyer and you can follow along with me or you can do it on your own. At the very end, I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks, things to remember when you're creating your flyer so that it comes out very nice and it catches many people's eyes. So my name is Julian Jefferson. Nice to meet you all. I've worked in digital marketing for about a year at a tech, st at a tech startup in 2017. And as well as I used to play live music in Christmas Village. I was a drummer. It was a great, great time, especially during the holidays where you get to see a lot of families having fun. That's one of my one of my favorite memories. So let's get into the objectives. What we want to do here is we want to learn the basic elements of what a nice flyer is you know it has a great layout the visuals are all there the information is clearly on the flyer and it's readable so we're gonna i'm gonna go in depth about each of those categories as well as go in depth on canva which is the platform we're going to be using in this tutorial poster my wall is also another nice platform where you can make flyers and other promotional uh, pieces like flyers, but in this tutorial, we're going to be using Canva. So let's talk about layout. So as if you're making a real poster, you have to think about what's going to be on top of what, what's going to be behind anything else, what's going to be seen, how the colors are going to overlap. So you have to be very aware of how you're going to be moving the elements of your flyer around or on the paper before you can really, you know, say you have a very complete flyer. So you want to make sure that the background, if you're going to be using any colors, that the text on top is going to be readable. You want to make sure your pictures or anything that you have on top are placed well. They're not being cut out in places you don't want them to be cut out because of, you know, layering words or things on top of it, as well as you want to make sure that it's not too cluttered and that people don't have to look too hard at the flyer or else, you know, they might give up if they can't really read it. So layering is very important. And if you take a look at this image on the screen, this is how Canva uses its layering. You can move things forward, meaning you're going to bring them towards the top and they're going to be on top of things behind it, or you can move it backwards. You can also align things to the top, middle, center, so that you can really get creative with how you're um, moving the pictures or words around in on your flyer visuals so we want to we want to know what's going to grab the attention of your audience how are we going to get them to look at this flyer and say hmm that's interesting let me go take a look how are we going to get them to read your flyer so what you want to do is make sure you have very nice visuals you don't have to have a lot of visuals it's just it has to be enough to get people intrigued you want to make sure there's not too much clutter as i said before if you take a look at this example I have right here, you see, you know, the colors of the background. Sometimes it makes it harder to read all of the small, small fine print, you know. So now I have to string a little bit harder. I see the Northern Pacific Railroad line. And then at the bottom, I see elegant sleeping cars and night trains. A lot of the other text on that flyer, I can't really read because... You know, it's not, it's not sized enough. So this is visually, this is an appealing flyer to me, at least because of the color scheme in the background, as well as the 
the words and how they're placed. However, it is a little bit too much cluttered in the words. So that could, you could make them bigger. You could space them out a little bit more so that people have an easier time reading it, as well as potentially changing the color so that the background, so that you can see the words a lot more clearly on the background. You also want to make sure you're thinking about the images that you're using. If you're going to be pulling them off of the internet, you want to make sure you're using non-copyrighted images. So Google is partnering with Creative Commons and they're creating essentially another database of copyrighted free images that you can use on whatever projects you're using and there's no issue with it. So that's that's a great resource to use as well. And so now after we tackle the visuals, let's move on to the information. So here you want to you want to think about what is my audience needing to find out from my flyer? What's the minimum amount of information that they need to get from my flyer? One thing you want to keep in mind, the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. If you can tag each one of those things on your flyer, then that's a good enough flyer so that when people look at it, they can get the very general information about what it, what the event's going to be, and then move on. Sometimes your event may need a little bit of uh, preparation. You can add that as well. You don't necessarily have to. You can you can leave that for a later part. But what what's most important is taking a look at making sure the information is readable and people are going to understand it. So if I'm looking at the example I have on my slides here, I see Welcome to the Pennington Folk Musical Festival. The first that's that's the title of this flyer however the first thing that really jumps out to me is Hamfest. I'm not really sure what Hamfest is. First annual Pennington Hamfest indoor tables. So you see you have a lot of a lot of the information you need is right there in the center but then you have all of these other things near the top left like CQCQ calling all stations. I guess that's that's something they wanted to add there. Oh, this looks like a ham radio fest as well. Um, and you see even even here, if you look at the top right, with VE testing at nine, that's a little bit hard for me to read. I'm not sure if that says that, but it's because, you know, it's a little cluttered, it's a little too tight, and the colors don't make it easier. So you want to keep that in mind as you're as you're creating your flyers. But here the information is there. The music festival, first ever ham fest. You have your location. You have directions. You have your time and date, and all the information is there. Readable. This is probably one of the most important things about what you need to make a great flyer. If you're making a flyer and no one's able to read what it says on the flyer, then it's not a very good flyer at all. So you always want to make sure that, you know, your font, whether it's the size or the actual font of the words is readable. It's all the words are a color. And if the words are a light color, the background of the words is a dark color or vice versa. You want to make sure that there's contrast so that you can easily see the words as well as where you're placing them on the flyer. If you place it, your words too close to the outer rim of the flyer, they're very likely to go unread if people are skimming a little bit too quickly. So if you take a look at the example I have in my slides, you see there's a lot of words here in different colors and they're bright and they're on different backgrounds and it's it feels a little bit overwhelming. You see, if you take a look at the 45th uh, bubble right there, that's good because the color of the 45th is starkly different than the background of the bubble, that yellow. 
So that's it makes the 45th a lot easier and readable. But next to it, where you see anniversary celebration, that's a lot harder to read because you have the blue with the slight yellow outline, but the background of that is also on blue. So you have to strain a little bit to read that. As well as if you take a look at the, the middle white section where you have all of the you know the words kind of bending and shifting about what's going to be there at the celebration that's also a lot harder to read and it, it makes me strain a little bit more so I'm less likely to you know put the effort into reading and looking at what that is because it's uh, a little a little all over the place so you want to make sure that everything's you know readable it, it doesn't take too much here's a good example you see each se it's segmented into three different sections you have job fair dark text light background then you have the date and this one you switch it dark background light text and then at the very bottom you have the little description um and it, it might be a little bit too small, but because there's so much, I, I can see why they had to keep it that small. But this is a very good job of making sure the words on your flyer are readable because that's what people are going to be looking at. Yeah, people could look at your flyer to just get the visuals, but you want to make sure that the information you're putting out there for your event is going to be carried to your audience in the most effective way possible. So let's try creating a flyer now. We're gonna go to canva.com. I'm gonna be putting a link underneath this video so you can click to get to canva.com. And what we're gonna do is create a flyer. So usually I like to start using a template, excuse me, just to, just to get a feeling for you know, ideas that are already created around flyers that I might be looking to create so that I can, you know, take things that I know work or know don't work and then use them for my flyer. So in this flyer example, we're going to, we're making a flyer about a new song that's getting released for our music. So we're gonna customize it to our brand and create this flyer. So here is Canva's homepage. I'm going to just close this little pop up down here at the bottom. But yes, this is the homepage. This is where you can go to create our flyer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search right here in the middle for flyers. They have different templates here for me to start creating a flyer. However, I think these will come up blank. So I'm going to see if they have any templates. Yes, I'm going to go up to the top toolbar, hover over templates. And then I see over here in marketing in the marketing section that they have flyers there. So I'm going to click on that. And now here are their flyer templates you can see toward the middle of the screen that they have a bunch of different categories around uh, the flyer templates that they have i don't see anything for music in this first list so i'm just going to scroll a little bit to see what they have these are some good flyers a lot of these look very nice I like this colors launch here. I think this one has nice colors. It's very simple. It has a lot of space for words as well as you see it has a picture here to just get across, you know, whether it's my picture as an artist releasing my music or whatever. Uh, but I think I like the template of this flyer. So I'm going to click on it. It, it says here it brings up what the flyer is as well as some more flyers to it and it even has the color palette that's used on the flyer right there 
uh, looking at the template information page here, I see that this is a two-sided flyer. Our flyer is going to be for our music is more likely going to be posted on social media. So we might not even need a second page. We might only need just this first, you know, page of the flyer, this front side. So we might not even need the second one, but I do like the style here. So I'm going to come over here to the right and click on use this template. So now that brings us into the editing window for our flyer. I'm going to go ahead and click got it to close this out once more. And then let's take a look at what they're telling you here to customize and comment. Click on it. The toolbar will appear above. Double click to edit the text. Okay. So I clicked on this little element here and then I see the toolbar. It looks like I can change the color here. I can crop it. I can flip it horizontally or vertically. This is the information on what this, this item or element is, as well as the position. Here's where I can do my layering, whether I want to move it backwards behind or if I want to move it forward in front of this pink square as well as a few other options over here we have copy style meaning i can uh, i can copy the the style of this and add it to any anything else so i i believe that's used for color schemes and so because i don't want that i'm going to come up here up above the toolbar for where my color is and go to undo and that brings it right back and if i if i actually did want to keep it i could come up here and go to redo as well uh, let's click next here i can upload my own images as well instead of using uh, canvas made pre-made images in their library I think that's a nice feature as well as sharing. We can come up here, we can download it. We can share it to social media. We can share a link to this flyer. That's, we're gonna get to that a little bit more after we finish creating our flyer. So as I was saying before, you see this is page one. I can add a title to this page. Let's do uh, music release flyer and now here I can either add notes to this set this page of my flyer I can move I can move it to this being the second page or I can move it back up to being the first page I can duplicate it delete it or add one and so because this is going to be going on social media I believe this is going to be the only page we need so I'm going to come down to the second page and I'm going to click the trash can and delete it. So let's take a look at the flyer we have now. I see if I take a look at the picture here, I see that it has canvas watermark. So I probably won't be able to use that in my flyer at the end. So in order to delete it, I'm just going to click on it so that the outside comes up it says there's a remove watermarks option here let's click on it see what happens here you'd have to to sign up okay so instead we're just going to go ahead and try and find a different picture so to delete it all you do is i'm going to go ahead and undo that you just click on it and then you can either come up here and click delete or you can click on the backspace button on your keyboard to delete it. So now let's get to the words. I'm going I'm gonna be making a flyer about my new music. So let's let's say in order to edit this, edit these words, I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna click. So now you see there's a box area here and then a second dotted area around here. This means that this set of words is grouped. So if I come up here to my toolbar 
as you have all the font and color and placement options here but I also see ungroup meaning that these words are grouped so if I were to move them around they're gonna move together so I'm going to ungroup them so that I can work on them separately for this very top line I'm going to say new song released and let's say the name of my song I think that's what we that's what we want to be the biggest thing out there the name of the song and then who I am as an artist so let's say the name of the song is love song number seven and so now you see after typing that in the number seven starts to overlap onto this element here so i can either move the element or i can adjust the wording in order to stretch it this way so i, I think i'm going to take this right hand bracket over here click and hold and just drag it over a little bit so that it pops up onto the next line and I think I like the way that looks a little bit better. And I'm going to click and drag it and move it around. So as you see that I'm moving things around, you see pink lines showing up. These, these pink lines help you, um, these pink lines help you get your spacing around so if you take a look at this pink line straight down the middle that's the center and it's telling me that i have the text box centered but if i move it off now you see i have it on the left it's now lined up with the new song released as well as the bottom or top of this and so now now that i have that in a place that i like i need to add who I am as an artist so I need to add a text box now so I'm going to come over here to text and if I what I what I'd like to do is I'd like to keep everything here the same relatively the same font there are a few things that can be different fonts but I want to keep it as similar fonts as possible so that it's I know that it's readable for my audience. So I'm gonna click on this. I see that it's collective as a font. So I can I can either take a font here, they have headings, subheadings, or body text. I think I'm gonna use a subheading for this. And I'm gonna let's say my my artist name is Julian Raps. So now I have to go and find. So when you open up the fonts, if you see this little crown next to it, that's a premium option for Canva. So it's not available for free use. However, they do still have a lot of free fonts to use. But as you can see at the top, because I already have it, on my flyer already the font that I'm using shows up right there so I'm gonna click on that I want to also change the color up it doesn't need to be this long so I'm gonna shorten it using the brackets on the side I'm gonna go up to my toolbar at the top and change the text color so in this color window I can click new color at the top it'll bring up this color wheel essentially where i can change the color you see the the words are changing as i'm dragging it around and you can try you know to find the same color but canva has this great feature where any any colors are already on your document they'll have listed for you so i can just click this one and i know it's the same color as the outline and the rest of the things on my on my flyer so I think I want to make my name a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking I'm going to go to my toolbar. I'm going to bold it as well as increase the font size. Let's just try 42. And now I don't like how that is placed. 
So I'm going to come to my right bracket and extend it. And then click and drag to get it lined up where I want it. So now I think I'm just going to add a little bit of flavor text and just say that it's by Julian Raps just so that people aren't confused as to why Julian Raps is just randomly on this page. And so now I think I can move love song number seven up to give my rap man a little bit more room to breathe there just like that i like the spacing between these three elements you see as of how i lower them i think those are placed very well and now for the rest of my flyer i have to think about the information so who julian raps what new song release called love song seven when now let's see now i can come down here they already have a date lined out for the previous flyer so let's let's adjust that let's say my song is releasing firstly i see that this is also grouped so i'm going to go ahead and ungroup that i don't think i'm going to be needing the smaller text down here i'm mainly just looking for uh the date so i'm going to go ahead and click backspace up and see I had the wrong thing highlighted, so it, it deleted what I didn't want. So I'm gonna go up to above my toolbar and click on undo. Click on these words here. I have the the word toolbar up here, so I know I'm clicking on the right thing, and I'm gonna click delete. So now for my date, let's say we're gonna be releasing this November 15th. Instead of 6 p.m., let's do 12 p.m. noon. And because it's going to be on music platforms, there is no location necessarily, no physical location, I should say, that you'll find my song. So I can delete the second part here. But what I do want to let my audience know is where they can find my song on what platforms can they listen to my music so we're going to get to that in a little bit i'm going to take my date here i'm going to take my brackets and move them and adjust the size of this text box and then i think this could be a little bit bigger because we want to make sure everyone knows when my song is dropping so that they can go and listen so let's try 32, I think that's okay. I actually do like it on two lines if I'm thinking about it. So I'm going to delete the comma and put it on two lines. And then I'm going to adjust my size to see how big I want it, I think maybe around this font now this is a very simple flyer as it is but i think we could jazz this up a little bit more by doing two things one adding some sort of imagery to this flyer whether it be a picture whether it be you know just some blotches of ink or whatever but something to kind of you know draw people's attention that's not words you know a picture of some kind or some some form of color so on canva i'm gonna go all the way to the left of my all my toolbars i see that they have photos here these are all people doing their things these are some very well taken photos let's let's search up some music related photos since i'm releasing the song so taking a look at all of these these aren't too bad i like a lot of these i like the simplistic nature of the the violin or guitar strings here 
like it's in the middle with this yellow background so i think i think that's a very it's very simple we don't have a lot of space on my flyer as it is to put anything so let's see if we can make we can make this work so in order to get this photo into my template you just click it and canva just puts it right there in the middle and so now you see as i'm moving my flyer around it's going to be in front of everything on the background but underneath the words right and that's that's exactly what we want for this but now it seems like i'm finding a difficult place to place this as well as the difference in the background color and that's going to be something we have to deal with so I think I'd like this a little bit better if the strings were on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my toolbar and click flip. And I'm going to flip horizontally. And there you, I have my string on the other side now. And I also want to move this backwards because I don't like how this is a different color from my background so what i could do is change my background color this pink to be the same color as this in the photo so that it's just now a new background and i only have the strings to worry about so to do that i'm going to go to my background i'm going to go up to my toolbar and click on the color and you see i have my document photos here and here the photo i have if they have all of the colors used here so i'm gonna go ahead and click that yellow and now my background has changed and now you can if you hover over the photo you see where the outline is but if you're not hovering over it it's just seamlessly there with the rest of my template and so because it does cut off this way I believe we can use these elements around here, like these lines and semicircles, to kind of hide that fact. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this down here a little bit. I'm gonna use my corner brackets to make the strings a little bit bigger. I want to make sure I'm not going too far over, or you see it it starts to break the outline barrier. And then now I have to take this one and I have to move its position forward so that is on top of it, as well as this one. We can move it forward. And so now the strings kind of just go and they hit this and then they're done. Like you don't see anything else. And I think that's a nice, a nice little tidbit to hide the cutting off of the strings. And so now here, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to highlight the date so that people know. So I think what I want to do is firstly, I want to, I want to move this a little bit so that I can move my date up. But if I just move this straight up, it's going to interfere with that. So I believe I'm going to come up here to this to this button and if I click and drag I can rotate it and it tells me the angle that it's being rotated at as I'm rotating it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate it up a little bit like this move it over to get get it how I'd like it and then I'm gonna move the date up so that it's it's almost like tucked underneath this curve and maybe we can give the date and time a background to, you know, make it pop a little bit more. So let's go. We can go over here to elements. So what elements are, they're just things like lines, shapes. Canva has a lot of different, um, you know, just little art pieces and stickers and things like that that you can drop on your flyers or your creative projects. Um, I think I like kind of these colorful squigglies just to kind of, uh, you know, just to bring attention to a small area of this flyer. 
um, as I'm scrolling through some of these look nice um, I think I think I'm gonna go with let's try this one it looks like it's sideways but maybe maybe we can maybe we can do something about that so this is definitely a little even if I just hold it over I see that it's a little bit too small to, to really house all of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And now I don't think I like how how small this is here. So I'm going to I'm just going to delete that and see if I can find another one that I like a little bit better. I think I like this one here just a slightly round blob to to draw attention to the date over here we can do that the colors are clashing a bit with the the words meaning i'll i'll have to change the words because now both the words and the background here are a little bit darker so let's try and change this to white and then there you can see that it's a lot easier to read on that on that background so we're going to try and center it a little bit and then because i know that this this little color gradient back here is only for my date and time i can group them so that whenever i need to move it they're going to move together so i click on i clicked on the the splotch in the background now i'm going to hold shift and click on the words and now you see that both of them are highlighted the word text box as well as the box holding the swatch and then i'm going to come up to my toolbar and click group and now they're one continuous thing that i can move as i need to now if i want to take a look at the swatch individually i can either click on the words and see i can edit them here or click on the swatch and edit it in my toolbar at the top and I think I will edit it to see if I can get it closer to my document colors let's see if we make that that color to keep the blue as well as let's see what happens if we make this yellow mm, that's not that's not too bad I don't think I like how that looks though so let's see if we can find another color that works in our favor. Maybe a, maybe a black. Oh, I think I like that using the photo colors. I think I'll use this, this gray, this darkish color here. And we can move it, adjust it to how we want it. Maybe. Yeah. So now it kind of looks like this is shooting into this. So now our flyer is getting a lot more, a lot more visually appealing to me because we have love song number seven and new song release by Julian at this day and time. And now we just have to figure out where do we find this song. So we need somewhere on here. It's already getting a bit cluttered there isn't a lot of free space left for me to to put any more information so what what i can do now is i can start moving things so let's try i can move our violin strings up a little bit as well as our half circle here and maybe i can fit fit the information here down at the bottom so I'm going to come to my text. I'm going to add a subheading and I'm going to say our music is available on and then I'm going to move that. I'm, I want to put it here and I kind of want it to curve along with the semicircle. I think that would be a great use of space here since you know, if we put it, if we put this 
text underneath, we have less room for you know where our music is available. So I'm gonna try and get it to curve around with the semicircles. Let's take a look at the effects here. And I see, yep, I have it here at the bottom right. Effects in our toolbar, there's a curve. So this meter down here, this bar, it tells you how much it's gonna curve. So let's just pull that back until it's curving how we want. And I think that's good. Let's move it up a little bit, see how that looks. Not too bad. We can move it a little bit. Get it centered, and there we go. Now, where is it going to be available? Let's just use some of the more popular streaming platforms. So things like Spotify, Apple Music things like that. So I'm actually going to search Canva to see if they have any logos or anything like that. So let's, let's look up Spotify. And we can see that they do have, they do have different logos and things here. So let's, let's try this. It's available on Spotify. We can take that and we see the green doesn't really match well with you know the overall color scheme of our our flyer so you know not all elements are going to have this option but it seems like this one does where i can change the color of what's going on there so i can just make it black and then edit the size so that it fits a little bit more comfortably underneath the arc Available on Spotify. And then let's see if they have anything else for Apple Music. And they have they have a few, but it seems like these are for the for the pro or premium options. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take this since you know, the Apple Music logo is kind of just this musical symbol. I'll take this. I'll, I'll move it toward the other. And I'm going to get this circle as close in size to the other one as possible. I'm going to make this one black as well. And then I'm just going to add a text that says Apple Music so that people know. Um, so I'm going to go down to my text. This is this can be uh, a little bit of body text instead of a subheading. So I'm going to put Apple music and then I'm going to drag that down. I, I couldn't make it a little bit bigger. You see, I wanted to at least look somewhat similar to the Spotify logo here, just in terms of size and font. So I'm going to, I'm going to bold that, see how that works. I'm going to increase the size a little bit. Let's try 28. highlight all of that, make it bold, and let's make the font similar to everything else on our flyer. And now we can move this a little bit closer. So now we have our availability where they can find our new music. So this is a pretty solid flyer for a music release. It gives you all the information you need. It's readable. The information that's important is popping out to the user. 
and I think this is a very nice rough draft of a flyer. Um, and so if you once you're done with your flyer and you're ready to post it, you can either come here and post it straight from Canvas, you know, interface, or you can download it to your computer and then post it as you see fit. So when you go to download, you want to make sure you don't, you can leave it as a PDF, but I like to switch it to a PNG and then you click download, your file will begin downloading and then there you see it, our design has been downloaded. All right, and even, even then after I saw it download, I see this little white piece at the very bottom kind of peeping in. So in order to get rid of that, you know, no matter no matter where you are in your design process, you can always find a mistake. So make sure you're always double, triple checking that everything's how you, you want it. I'm gonna move this a little bit. And then move our words. And then I think we can adjust the the curve on this to get it a little bit more even. Or maybe I can just rotate it a bit. Yeah, I think rotating it is the better option. And then we center it inside the semicircle a little bit more. And there you go. So we can download the new finished product in the same fashion and there you have it so let's move on to tips tricks and things to remember um one of the things i like to do best is get inspiration from templates i think it's a very i think it's a very good idea especially if you're not really sure what kind of flyer you want to make or if you don't have any ideas of how your flyer is going to look, getting inspiration from a template is a great way to kind of start that design process. I think highlighting your important dates and times as I, you know, as I created that little color blob behind the release date for my, my song, I think that's a great way to get people to remember um, this is when this is gonna be released. That's important information. Let me highlight it so people are drawn to it a little bit more. You wanna keep the information concise. I didn't have a lot of words. It was really the bare minimum of what I needed to tell my audience about what the flyer is for. So the flyer was for me releasing a new song, love song number seven who I am as an artist, when that song is releasing and where they can find that song. That's all they needed to know about my new song. And that's all the information that's on the, on your flyer. And last but not least, if it wouldn't catch your eye, it might not catch your audience's eye. So when you're making flyers or other material for your own benefit, make sure that it's something you like and something that's gonna get you intrigued because the people who are also going to be intrigued by your event or your flyer, they're also going to find it intriguing and take that second to read it. So if it's not going to catch your eye, it might not catch your audience's eye. So it's you want to make sure that whatever kind of flyer you're making, you like the way it looks first, and then you go out and download and print and do whatever you need to with that flyer. So... Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you have any questions, I'll be putting an email on the screen so that you can send questions. Or if you've created a few designs or flyers yourself and you want to show them to us, send it to those email to that email right there. And I hope you join us for our next tutorial. Thank you.